All right. Good morning, everybody. We're here live at the Florida Wildflower Symposium uh, in Orlando, the UF IFAS extension here. And we're here with Chris Waltz, who is a Florida Wildflower Foundation and a Florida Native Plant Association volunteer. And he's worked very hard over the years to create something that a lot of people really want in their gardens, and that is container gardens and these are filled with wildflowers so Chris you're going to be presenting here at the symposium today on this very topic and I'm lucky to get to talk with you today before you do that to get a sneak peek as to what you're going to talk to people about so Chris can you tell us a little bit more about how you got into container gardening with wildflowers in the first place I mean they're wild shouldn't they be out of pots Right, yes. Um, so this whole uh, process of, of using uh, containers to grow wildflowers and native plants started when I would do volunteer events and people would say, oh, I love wildflowers or I love um, native plants, but I don't own my property or I live in a condo or I live, you know, uh, and, and I rent and I don't own, so I don't want to plant anything in the landscape. So ultimately I started um, coming up with concepts and, and groups of plants that you could put in a container that would allow people to have these on their back patios and porches um, and still be able to attract pollinators and birds, provides uh, sustainability for them uh, in the landscape. Okay, so Chris, can you tell us a little bit more about this particular pot? And if you can kind of come down here with me, I want to be able to hear you a little bit better. All right, so this particular pot here was designed to be for a shade garden. So a, a patio that might be on the north end of a condo uh, where it doesn't get very much sun and the sun is limited. So this first plant here in the front that has the heart-shaped leaves is the native uh, native violet or the common violet. Um, All right, hold tight, Chris, because yep. as some of you might know at home, <laughs> if you're tuning in, and you've seen some of our previous live videos this uh, this past day or two, you know that we are right in the middle of uh, an airport area. <laughs> so every once in a while we have these planes going by. Okay, it's getting a little bit better. So Chris, keep going with All this right, violet. So this is the native violet. It's a host plant for um, one of the native butterflies in our area. Um, it blooms in the spring. Uh, it's, a, it's a cool plant. Uh, a lot of people don't even know we have native violets here in the state of Florida. Um, and so this is a cool one. It's one of the first things to bloom in the spring. You'll get a, a small purplish flower on it. Uh, this makes a great ground cover for a shady area as well. Um, it makes great hanging baskets as well. It makes great hanging baskets. Well, yes. that makes sense, Chris, because I noticed, I mean, this is a younger plant, but it's already starting to go over the pot in that beautiful kind of droopy way. Yeah, kind of cascading down. Right. Mm -hmm. So what can you tell us about this one that we see flowering. With All right, so this guy, things. this guy here is spiderwort, and this is a great um, native wildflower that we have. Uh, these purple flowers are unique because it's only got three petals. It's great for pollinators. In the morning, you will see this thing covered in um, honeybees and other bees like carpenter bees and uh, bumblebees, which are in de major decline. Um, these small little, I don't know if you can zoom in, but you'll see the small little flowers that haven't opened yet. When these, um, after these open and they start to dry, um, you'll actually attract cardinal, uh, cardinal uh, birds to your uh, landscape with this uh, particular plant. And it's also a great replacement for the common daylily that people are trying to always grow in Florida um, that doesn't seemingly do well because of the uh, lack of cold weather. Wow, so it's ornamental and it has wildlife value, both birds and pollinators, and it grows everywhere. Yes, pretty much the entire state. So this will be a great addition to a shade garden. Uh, for a shade garden, you can it'll, it's also very versatile, so you can grow it even in dry, sandy areas, um, including full sun, full sun to full shade. Wow, and so that's the case with this rouge plant over here as well, right, Chris? Correct. Uh, this is rouge plant, which is typically an understory plant you'll find um, growing uh, underneath in shady areas. It's got uh, beautiful white to whitish blush pink flowers that you will typically see year-round, um, which are followed by red berries. The, the uh, flowers themselves are frequent, frequently visited by the state butterfly, which is the zebra longwing. Oh. Um, and then the berries are often eaten by mockingbirds. So again, uh, this, this particular pot was designed to not only attract pollinators, but to attract some uh, birds as well. All right. Now, Chris, 
I know this one works well in the shade. Will any of these work well in the sun too? Um, you can. Um, the violets themselves don't really like the sun too much. Uh, they tend to they tend to fade out in the sun, and they also like a little bit more moisture. So these would be more of a shade type plant. The other two, both the rouge plant and the spiderwort, um, will both grow in full sun. Um, the spiderwort of the three will do the best in full sun. The rouge plant, however, when you grow it in the sun, it tends to bleach out the leaves and gives almost a variegated look. Um, and then the stems actually turn a darker red. So you get a totally different looking plant when you plant it in the sun versus when you plant it in the shade. Oh, that's really interesting. So um, while this next plane goes over us, again, we are live. If you have questions for Chris, you can feel free to um, write them in a comment and I'll see them and I can ask Chris for you. And if you're liking what you see or loving it, you can uh, go ahead and press the like button or the heart button and let us know that you're here watching. Now, this is just one of the pots that you have, Chris. I know that there are two more just inside the building that I'll pan over to. This is the IFAS building where we have um, all kinds of activities going on today during the Florida Wildflower Symposium, our annual symposium. And in there is a silent auction. You have two other pots that are up for grabs. Can you tell us um, just a little bit about what you have in those pots? I know we don't have a visual for those, so we'll just spend a quick second on that. So the other two pots that I designed were uh, more designed more for um, attracting uh, pollinators and uh, butterflies. So they're more uh, apt uh, and for sunny locations, dry sunny locations. So one of the pots that I have uh, put together in there has um, uh, our native uh, cassia uh, or senna and uh, in the middle and then surrounding it, it has a, um, it has, one of them has blanket flower, uh, which is a great pollinator plant and loves the dry sunny location. And the other plant in that one is dotted horseman, which will bloom in the fall, which is another uh, magnet for pollinators. Uh, and then the second pot that's in there has, again, a cassia in the middle, which is a larval host for the sulfur butterflies, uh, surrounded by uh, verbena, which that particular species is the maritime, so that's more coastal. So if you lived, say, in a condo along the beach, it would be more salt tolerant. Um, and then it's also got um, black-eyed Susans in there Okay. For, for pollen. So, Chris, I know a lot of people will ask me when I talk about container plantings, what kind of soil should you use for these? Okay, so what uh, the soil that I use is I use an, uh, an organic mixture that doesn't have any, um, any fertilizer in it. It's basically just the uh, broken down organic material. And then I actually mix it with some of these uh, small pine bark nuggets. Because um, we got to remember pines are one of the major key species in the state of Florida. So a lot of our natural areas where these native wildflowers would be growing would have a lot of pine straw and or a lot of broken down decaying pine trees. So basically what I do is I mix that with an organic potting soil from any box store and I mix it at about a 50-50 ratio uh, so that you have good drainage but yet you still have a little bit of consistency in there to help hold a little bit of moisture. That's um, great. On some of the other ones, when I want something to be a little drier, um, I like for instance uh, Gallardia, you can actually grow that in straight builder sand which is a very coarse sand that you could pick up in any box store. Really? So it's literally just sand for Gallardia? That's literally it. just sand, yep. Wow, that's phenomenal. This really gives people, I think, a whole new outlook on Florida wildflowers. And I don't know about you, but when it comes to me and I'm trying to sell people on wildflowers, um, which I do often, I think these potted um, container gardens are really a great way to go. Why, why would you say that's the case? Um, well, I say it's a great way to go because not only are you using plants that have been here for thousands of years and have co coexisted with the wildlife that we have in our, in our area, um, but you're, you're being sustainable. There are plants that will survive on what Mother Nature gives them. Um, when I create my pollinator gardens in my own landscape, um, once I get them established, they pretty much survive on the rainwater um, in the sun. Occasionally during heavy drought periods, I might have to give them a little extra splash. But if you put the right plant in the right place, so if you use a dry plant in a dry container, it's going to thrive through those dry periods. So it's something that, you know, people aren't spending hundreds of dollars to constantly replace. Um, they reseed readily, um, they thrive with the conditions. So it's something, and then it sustains uh, wildlife. Absolutely. And if you're just tuning in, we're looking at a container garden that Chris Waltz has created for the shade. You heard us right, for the shade. So if you're not quite sure what to plant in the shade, these are just three.
Uh, we have, again, Chris, can you let us know what these three are? All right, starting in the lower level, this is our native common violet. And then uh, over here we have the rouge plant, which has the nice little white flowers on it, followed by red berries that the birds will eat. And then this beautiful purple bloom is the spiderwort, which again is a great pollinator plant for bumblebees and honeybees, as well as um, cardinals when the dry seeds set in. All right, thank you, Chris. We have another air airplane going by, so I think that's our cue to cut out for now. Stay tuned for more live videos of the Wildflower Foundation Symposium, our annual symposium. And thanks again, Chris. We really appreciate it and look forward to your talk today. All right, you're very welcome. Thank, thank you. you.